Let's let's read Pobelter's tweet longer here. For the first time since season four, I won't be playing on LCS team this split. I went through a lot of rough emotions recently. First it was shock. Is this for real? Disbelief. I can't believe these teams would pick up these players so much worse than me. Frustration. I don't think I can bear to watch LCS from the sidelines. This is BS. Sadness. Nobody wants me. I was very angry as well, both myself for not playing better last year and also at the teams who, in my humble opinion, are just making baffling decisions and sign random imports, washed up players, players who don't work hard and are just playing for a paycheck in NA. It's kind of disappointing as well that I had a calls with a couple of teams who seemed very interested in acquiring me as a player and then were very unresponsive the next day, told me to wait as I sorted things out and ended up sort of ghosting me. I was even willing to accept a pay cut, try out bootcamp, do anything to get my foot in the door. I thought I could expect a little bit given more of my history, given a little bit more given my history of success with NNA at least, but then there was nothing. <laughs> to be honest, I still think it's really crazy. I couldn't find a team, but I need to accept that reality. I still think I'm one of the best players. It bums me out to read that the mainstream opinion is that I'm good enough for NA, can't perform on the international stage, and there's a lot of people who are just being revisionist and claiming I never even played well domestically when I actually played so fucking good all of summer 2017 and all of 2018. I invite you to rewatch all those playoff series I played during that time frame and tell me I was a role player or got carried. Wait, what team was Pobelter on in summer 2017? Is that Immortals? I'm trying to remember. Must have been immor Immortals, right? By the way, I don't think I've hit my ceiling yet. I think you only start to fall off permanently when your motivation drive drops, and I'm just as motivated as the first day I played on the LCS stage and willing to put in 12 plus hours a day practicing. I think there's a misconception that veterans are a known quantity and rookies have boundless potential. As long as you're willing to put in the time and hard work as well as stay open-minded, there is no limit to growth in this game. I was really inspired by a documentary I recently watched on YouTube about the Dota team OGs run through TI 8 slash 9 the virtual worlds. They had a player named Seb who was actually considered just retiring after not having much success for a long time. Didn't play competitively for a while and suddenly he can just join and have excellent performances in back to back worlds and win. If you think about League, there are players like Khan who was actually playing for three, four years on LSPL teams without much fanfare. Now he's one of the best top laners in the world. I always thought there were two really big differences between me and the most other mid laners in NA. One, I'm always willing to sacrifice for my teammates. For example, on TL, I felt like I would always find a really good gank timings to just blow up top or bot lane, even if I had to sacrifice a little bit. Yet, the feeling I get is a lot of other mid laners in NA are so worried about falling behind 1v1, losing in CS, or losing lane, or really just taking any sort of risk. And I was always confident in being able to at least hold my own in lane no matter what I picked, instead of giving our counter pick to another lane to make the game easier for them. Very true. Very, very true. I will say Eugene as a teammate was absolutely incredible. So fucking good, man. I actually really liked playing with Eugene. I thought he was really good. Actually crazy that people think he's fucking bad or not even worth like an LCS spot. I think he's easily a top three, top four mid laner in LCS. You could say Jensen and Bjergsen are better than him individually, but I still think he's he has a lot of potential. And when I played with him, we made a great combo, me and Pope. He's so good. I seriously believe in this no matter what team I play for a stronger week, even in the very last game of our failed gauntlet run, I let Viper play mid Riven Rissarelli because he was just so confident he would smash the game, and I YOLO played Karma vs Hooni's Nar because the whole team was on board with it. I played maybe one game of Karma during the whole month of scrims leading up to gauntlet, and I literally never played the matchup before. When you're getting smashed and the game seems impossible to win, you can do two things. AFK on your turret and play for KDA as your Nesquik explodes, or as so to avoid being flamed by everyone, or go for really crazy low percentage plays and maybe you look like a complete idiot and feed hard. But at least you tried instead of just passively bleeding out to death. I'm definitely a player that is in the latter category, and I strongly believe most players belong to the first. Also true. Eugene also Eugene definitely wanted to do shit instead of just... Though, I would say, I would say when you're behind, YOLOing is not the right term. Like, I, I understand he's, like, saying this to... The, the massive amount of fans but like saying that you're yoloing it just means like i hope this works it's more like it might work if he makes a mistake and i have to go for it i've kind of thought it out in my head if he plays perfectly i play perfectly then we lose but it's possible that he messes up and then i can win so yeah that, maybe maybe that could have been worded differently but i agree that bleeding out and playing for kda is probably stupid Maybe this all just sounds like some sort of excuse. I don't know what it is, but I just want to get my thoughts out. It feels good to write out things I've been holding in for a while. Hopefully it's not just a word vomit, not kind of a word vomit. I'm not proofreading any of it. I think deep down I've always been afraid of getting even more and more negative criticism if I posted something like this. And in a way, I've always been afraid to defend myself because it feels like I'm deflecting blame. I've seen a lot of players over the years have a really have a tough time when they're made to be the scapegoat or weak link of a team's failure. And I never want to say anything to, that made it seem like I was deflecting blame onto any of my teammates who were really just trying their best too. Yeah, that does feel really shitty. I feel fucking bad for Eugene. Anyway, I'm always willing to give to own up when I play poorly. I think I played great all of 2018 LCS. Agreed. I think he did too. I think I played like shit at MSI. Yeah. 
Especially there's this one game versus Evos, Evos where if I really just played like a human, we at least would have gotten out of groups, but we did not, and I'm sorry for that. In my defense, our team atmosphere was so bad that we had to sub in Joy for a game because Ole was so mentally broken. I was just so super tilted the whole event as well because the team environment was so negative and stressful. Still, I should have played better. I learned a lot from that tournament that I needed to be so much mentally stronger. I think I played okay at Rift Rivals, but honestly, I don't remember too well. 2019 Worlds, I actually somewhat remember every game. He means 2018 for sure. Honestly, our team environment was not the best again. I remember we had one particularly bad scrim day where we just openly talked about our problems. We're trying to openly talk about our problems, but it felt like we were just flaming each other until 3 or 4 a.m. I made a sacrifice TP play bot. We should have killed Kinder, but there was some misexecution. In the heat of the moment, it felt like everything went perfectly with that TP play. Our bot could smash open the game. Maybe looking back on it, it wasn't a great play. It ended up setting me really far behind, wasting my flash. So, luckily, somehow survived a gank that I should have died to. Ended up getting solo killed like a noob later and was just down two levels the whole game. Overall, I played bad. KT LeBlanc game. I remember using W and dying like a noob over Wraith Pit. Then there was a situation over the dragon where I think I should have gotten one or two more kills. Can't remember the rest of the game. Overall, I played bad. Looking back on this set, I think my knowledge of mid matchups was just lacking at the time. I had Ride versus Syndra, which was a pretty tough matchup, and opted into LeBlanc vs. Sandra the second game. Overall, KT was a really strong team. I think I got outperformed individually, but we were honestly just worse as a team. They almost beat IG at this tournament, who won Worlds. We got spanked individually and as a team. EDG Galio game. Did all I could do as a Galio. EDG Cinder game. Never had a critical time. Still did my job and pressed R at really good times. Played team fights properly. We played versus Elmas team. Can't only remember one of them. I was playing Cinder versus Cass. I was just up 40 CS ramming into his turret the whole game, getting annoyed we couldn't snowball the game harder with that much mid prio. I think I played well in 2019 spring. A lot of our wins was from me hard carrying on the Sandra Zoe. In playoffs, we eked out versus UGS and then just got hard smashed as a team by TL. Right. I remember actually. We played FlyQuest. I think I played like shit for the first half of Summer Split. Then I started to play just fine. Then I was back to smashing everyone towards the end of our gauntlet boot camp. I was really confident we were going to win gauntlet easily and that I was going to carry hard, but it didn't just pan out the way that way on game day. Anyway, I guess my conclusion on all this is that it's not the end because I played badly for one split. It's not the end because I didn't play well at a tournament. It's not even the end that I have a bad year, a bad couple of years. Seriously, maybe you read this whole post and think I'm a shit player, but to me, if will only be the end if I give up because of those failures. But from every failure, there is seriously, sincerely a chance to self-reflect, learning to grow. I never once got the feeling when playing on stage or in scrims, this player or this team is just on another level that I can never attain. Until I feel that way, I refuse to give up. Right now, I'm working on my future plans. I think I'll be closely involved with the competitive scene. And will be open to trying out for any team that might want me for Summer Split, or before then too, I guess. If you read this all the way to the end, I appreciate it. There's still a lot more I want to say, but I've been writing this for a couple hours now, and I think I've covered most of what I wanted to say anyways. Thanks for reading. That took a couple hours? Come on, dude. Pablo you are you're spending a couple hours? This is like eight paragraphs. Huge, huge. I'm going I'm to show him some support, man. Hmm. Yeah, I think Pablo Belts are not... Uh, not getting a team is very strange. Very, very strange. How many times has he won LCS? Let's see. Twice with me. Three times with me. Uh, I think that's it. Three times. Three time LCS champion. I think he's very good. Uh, zero negative NA mids this year. Yeah. Wait, I thought. Uh, I thought Golden Glue was playing. So maybe there is a negative NA mid, but I don't know. I think. Some of them, like Ika and Ryoma or something, if they're actually coming, are just... Oh, Golden Glue is support. Oh, I didn't know that. Keith is support. Wow, that's crazy. I actually really want to uh, read this thread here. It's about Pope Walter's, like sad thing. It's this one right here. It's about his twit longer. Demonte didn't find a team. Ugh. Monty's good, but he's so overrated by Reddit and the community. Just because he made worlds doesn't mean he was the third best mid laner. He was not. Very much not. Pub's good. I'd say top three or four mid in NA. Underrated NA mid laner. Kind of. I think most people know how good he is. I don't know why everyone was always trying to shit on him, though. He actually plays so well in the finals and stuff of LCS. Basically, when it was like playoffs time, Pub would always play super well. We would always win together, pretty much. Actually, every time I played with him, we won LCS. Jesus, Pope was on such a shit team this last year. No wonder the bad results kind of soured his reputation. Nobody can carry FlyQuest from mid lane, guys. That's just not happening. That's a sad thread. Oh, well. Oh, Champion Insights. Wait, I'm kind of into this. Wait, wait, wait. Pope not getting an LCS spot is messed up. Fuck this league. 
Yeah, I'm, I don't know. I don't know what people are thinking. Like, I think Pope is a huge upgrade for like the bottom teams. The bottom like five or six teams should definitely want him. It's crazy they didn't make a bid. Um, we're slowly getting bought here for this. Nice. Lucia is not useless. Kaisa? I don't know. <laughs> hey, Lucian's OP. Penta. Penta? Penta? Actually, no, 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 don't get a Penta. Don't get a Penta. Why? Because then you have to call me daddy. Oh, call me daddy! <laughs> say it, say it, say it. You promised. You promised. <laughs> You promised! You said if we do and, and I get offended, you call me daddy! Let me hear it! Uh. Dad? <laughs> that's, that's the most half ass. Alright, whatever, I'll take it. Look, I'm gonna make you do it in full, like in person, alright? <laughs> On stream, it's well, not gonna be as emotional. Oh, uh, yeah.